Comparisons between budget tripods are hard to find. Shoppers are often encouraged to spend a few hundred dollars, as the lower tiered entries from brands like Manfrotto often start around $300. It's commonly accepted that tripods are a great place to invest. They hold their value for years, they never become obsolete, but they're also totally invisible when they're doing their job correctly. If lists of bestsellers on different internet marketplaces are anything to go by, there are an awful lot of people shopping for tripods under $150, so I thought I'd take a look at a few and try to address this lack of information. We're going to discuss the Solens T170, which is around $50, the 3Pod V3AH, which is around $100, and the eImage EG01A3, which I'm shooting on, which is just over $150. Let's start with the cheapest of the three, the Solens T170. While it says fluid head in the proper name, this is really a photo tripod. The T170 shares a basic design with lots of travel tripods from bigger known names like Manfrotto, Benro, or Three-Legged Things, which all have much more expensive offerings in this space and are all a bit easier to use. The tripod is aluminum and weighs just over three pounds, which is on par with the competition. If you want a significantly lighter tripod, you'll have to look for carbon fiber, which is also significantly more expensive. As with most travel tripods, it's pretty light, and as with anything lightweight, the trade-off is stability. Small vibrations in the tripod, like a small bump in one of the legs, usually shake the whole system, including the camera. The most relevant result of this is that the camera shakes for a bit after any small adjustment, and usually even shakes for a moment when I hit the record button. Let's talk about the legs next. These legs are definitely made of aluminum, which feels pretty solid and are held together well. There are no unexpected vibrations or noise when I move any of the parts, and they don't feel hollow to the touch. I'm not super knowledgeable about materials or metals, but they seem sturdy enough to do what you'd want them to do. These legs have a four-stage design, which allows it to expand from such a small package to a height of 62 inches. The implementation of this design is far from perfect, but I think is another trade-off to keep the cost down. With the Solens, you rotate the rubber feet to lock and unlock the legs and allow them to expand or retract. This is pretty stable, but it takes a little getting used to and could really use a visual indicator to show which sections are locked or unlocked. Sometimes I think I've closed each section when one is still open and the whole thing tilts to one side pretty quickly. Again, you learn to deal with this pretty quickly and it hasn't put the camera at risk or anything, so it's not much more than an annoyance. The biggest issue is that it makes it very tough to adjust the length of the legs without picking up the whole tripod, so making height adjustments is a bit more time consuming than I'd like. I would love to see better locking mechanisms that make it easier to see the status of each leg and maybe some distance markers to make it easier to level the camera, but these are traits of tripods that cost three to five times as much. These legs can also adjust their angle relative to the ground. Each adjustment is made by pushing down on a sliding release mechanism up near the head, which allows the legs to rotate with three different latching points. This gives you three different positions where you can set the tripod from a traditional upright position to nearly flat to the ground. The drawback to the third lowest position is that the center column sticks out a bit from the bottom, which means you can't lower the camera all the way while the tripod is in the lowest position. I measured the minimum distance between the quick release plate and the ground in each position. The second position can get as low as 14 inches, while the third position gets down to 13 inches. If there's only an inch of difference between these, I'm not sure what the point of the third lowest position is. At a glance, it's a photo ball head built on a 3 8 inch mount, which is all pretty standard. The quick release plate on mine is a replacement head with an extra locking mechanism, but the original mount just had a knob to the side to open or close the Arca Swiss plate. Ball heads are pretty useful, which is why they're pretty standard for photography. They make it easy to get the camera level to the horizon and lock the camera in any other kind of angle you might want. The part I didn't expect is the bearing plate, which sits on the 3 8 inch mount because there is definitely fluid holding those bearings and allows the tripod to get some pretty smooth action on pans. This, of course, isn't the same as a fully fluid video head, but smooth pans are still a very useful tool in any sort of video work. The two-section expanding center column is something I really appreciate, as it's nice to be able to make height adjustments without having to unlock each leg. It does have a better locking mechanism than the legs, with a nice rubberized grip that make it much more satisfying to use. The T170 does have a couple of extra features or modes that I haven't really used. One of the legs has a grip on it because you can unscrew that entire leg to use as a monopod. It's a very basic monopod since it's just an extendable stick with no extra features, but I guess it could work in a pinch even if I haven't used it much. The center column can also be unscrewed entirely to allow you to hold the camera upside down, which may be nice if you need to get very low to the ground. As I mentioned earlier, the very low setting from the tripod doesn't really do much, but you can get closer if you turn the camera upside down and keep the legs in their second position. 
Overall, I'm pretty happy with this thing. For about $50, I feel like I've gotten plenty of use out of it. It packs in a suitcase or a backpack very easily. It hasn't given me any trouble, which is more than I can say for plenty of other budget items I've bought on the internet. And I already feel like I've gotten my money's worth. I'll definitely keep it around, because it might be great to use with a slider or even a B-cam for interview shoots or something. For the price, I think this is well worth it. Even if it skimps on a few nice-to-haves, it does a good job at what you'd expect from a tripod. Moving on to the V3AH from 3Pod, which is a mixed bag to say the least. I paid about $90 for it, and as of this writing, Adorama, who claims it as an exclusive item, has it for $130. I've been able to find it on some other online marketplaces, but I think the seller is still usually at Arama, but the price may be different on different marketplaces. It definitely looks the part of a nice, well-built tripod. It has a two-stage design and nice-looking aluminum legs and has a maximum payload capacity of about nine pounds. And the head itself looks pretty robust until you really get your hands on it. Starting with the legs, the build quality is kinda iffy. The aluminum that comprises most of the build seems thinner than that of even the super budget Salens tripod. There's a bit of rattling noise if I shake the tripod or make any adjustments. Ooh. All of the connection points where the locking mechanisms sit or the platform which holds the bowl are all plastic and they don't feel like they'd hold up if I were to drop this thing or drop something on it. As I'm looking at it, there are chips in the finish or the paint. Um, that just kind of are visible that I'm just now noticing. The locking mechanisms themselves work all right, and you can open or close them with one hand, but they also feel pretty flimsy and they rattle around a bit when they're not engaged. The feet aren't bad. There are these rubber balls which you can screw in to reveal a spike at the bottom if you need a different kind of grip on the terrain. But again, these things rattle around a lot and they take more time than I'd like to screw far enough to move up and reveal the spikes. There's also a spreader bar in the middle, which is pretty standard with tripods of this type of design, and a 50 millimeter fastball. The bowl's a nice addition for this price, but the 50 millimeter part is a bit weird since I haven't found anything else that fits the 50 millimeter size. As much as the legs are a mixed bag, the head is where I had real problems, but let's start with the pros. The head has a relatively high payload compared to the tripod's weight and the price point, and the Manfrotto style quick release plate and the mount are solid. There's a decent length handle included and the rosette style connector holds it very securely. After that, it's kind of all downhill with this thing. Back to that quick release plate for a moment. The locking knob on the side is really tough to access with the camera on top. I found myself having to plan my movements and make sure the knob was in the right place before putting a camera on it or else the camera would be in the way of the knob rotating and I wouldn't be able to secure it. Now that we're on the knobs, basically everything else with these knobs just feels kind of wrong. You can only lock each part in place rather than having tension adjustments. The knob placement is kind of confusing. There are knobs in the same spot on different sides of the head. One locks the quick release plate and the other locks the tilt action. And I often found myself reaching for one when I wanted the other. Knob on the front, which controls the pan action, feels very flimsy and like it could fall off at any moment. The knobs flop around and it doesn't feel like it catches any resistance until it's completely in the locked position. Same with this knob underneath the bowl, which is tough to grip and to get it to move and also makes it hard to get tight enough to hold it securely. A much more important issue than the feel of the knobs is the tilt and the pan action, which is just not smooth. Maybe my unit is defective and this is a quality control issue, but I cannot get smooth action out of this thing. Tilts pick up a stutter, like there's dirt or something in the head, and the pans behave the same way where they resist in a few particular spots. During pans, there's an audible rubbing sound where you'd expect to find fluid. This is a fluid head tripod after all, and there's just plastic rubbing up against plastic. Which brings up another point. Every part of this head, except for the Manfrotto plate, is plastic. I ended up missing the Selene's simple ball head, which at least had smooth pan action, could be locked in all sort of different positions and had adjustments that made sense. The head also has a lot of resistance no matter how you set it and is very quick to point itself back to the center, which makes it difficult to hold any action or to adjust the speed. Ultimately, I think this tripod is kind of a BS product when you consider this straight false claim that it's marketing materials and spec sheets. The available specs advertise that you can adjust the tension, which you cannot. 
the listing when you Google the model name calls it an aluminum tripod when the only aluminum I can find is in the legs. And if it's supposed to be a fluid head, I'm not sure how it's possible that I'm getting rubbing noises during routine pans. Ultimately, I recommend you stay away from this tripod. I don't really like advising people to stay away from a product, but between misleading claims in three pods materials, its failure to do some of the basics required of a good video head, and the price, it kind of seems like a scam. Sure, it's possible I'm being too harsh on this thing, but with the dishonesty combined with the appearance of quality, lead me to believe it's designed to look like a nicer tripod to fool people who just haven't the experience, and I cannot condemn that any more strongly, since it's often young people or people just getting started. I was originally planning to sell it, but I feel like it would be kind of unethical to pass it on to someone else and might just end up taking the loss or using it for stationary tasks. Speaking of nicer tripods, let's talk about the E-Image. The full name of the tripod is the EG01A2 with GH01 fluid head, and holy hell, that's a mouthful. I believe E-Image sells all of these parts as components, so EG01 is the name of the head and legs package, the GH01 is the head by itself, but if you wanted the legs with a different head, it would be the EG03 or 05 or 06A2 instead of the EG01. This tripod, especially in contrast to the three pod, is fantastic, especially for the $170 price point. From across the room, it looks very similar to the three pod. Both are almost entirely black. It has the same two-stage design and a real serious looking head on top of robust legs and a solid center column. The E-Image has a number of visual details which make it stand out when you look at it for longer than just a moment, like the feet and the visible chrome where the head meets the bowl. Speaking of which, this tripod has a 65mm bowl which works well and is a much more common size if I want to upgrade the head later on. Starting with the legs, everything here is quality. You have some pretty solid aluminum legs which are held together securely and free of any vibration, on top of some really interesting feet and connectors that keep it all together and work really well. Sure, some of the pieces are still plastic, but the plastic feels much more dense than on the three pod and overall there's less of it. Even the mechanisms which lock or unlock the motion of the legs are rotating knobs which are easy to work with one hand, easy to tell when they're locked and allow you to really feel that they're securely held in place. There are rubber feet at the end which you can pop off and on pretty quickly to reveal some real gnarly looking spikes underneath that work really well on different terrain. All in all, this tripod is easy to set up, has a number of different adjustments, and is very stable once it's set up. The center column, or the base, continues the trend with the 65mm bowl, which feels really smooth if you're trying to level the head inside it, should you find yourself on uneven ground. There's even a bubble level here, which sounds small, but can be really helpful in making sure that it's a level without having to go check in the camera. The head here is just as good as the rest has been. First, it has easily accessible and easy to use adjustments for each type of movement. Yes, full adjustments. There is a lock knob which still has a solid feel to it and is a knob like those found on the legs. Opposite of that is a knob which controls the tension on pans. Again, you have a lock and a tension control knob. And it's kind of nice to have both if you have a nice action dialed in with one and don't want to lose that, but you still want to lock everything down. Like the three pod, there is a rosette style connector on each side, but the handle with the image is longer and feels more substantial in the hand like the handle for each tripod is an extension of its legs. It has an 11 pound total payload limit and a 10 and a half pound weight, both of which are a little more than the three pod. The head comes with a counterbalance adjustment if you've got a heavy battery on the rear of the camera or a heavy lens on the front and you find the weight distribution is affecting your movements. I haven't had any issues with the action of the pans or the tilts and I've been trying to find it. All of the motions are smooth and really easy to dial in to get exactly the speed and motion that you want. At the risk of sounding like a homer for this thing, I'm not sure why it's available for the price or what you'd get for spending twice as much. It's about $50 more expensive than the 3Pod, but I think it's worth a lot more than that. Usually one of the features that separates tripods of different price points is the maximum payload, but a $350 tripod from E-Image has nearly the same payload. Honestly, I'm not even sure what spending the $350 would get me that this tripod doesn't have. Sure, I suppose it could be more portable, but I don't think that's what anyone is expecting when they buy this tripod. Even in E-Image's line, the tripods just get heavier until you get up to the $800 or $1,000 price range when the carbon fiber models appear. I'm not even sure this is really a complaint. 
I suppose the quick release mount could be better since it needs to be dropped into place from the top rather than slid in. That said, I'm not sure it would be really better as doing it this way makes a very strong connection which releases very easily. The connection is so strong that sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, I'll move the whole rig by grabbing the top handle on the camera cage, which I know is a bad idea. But the only part which has come loose at all is the connection between the cage and the top handle, which was really quick and easy to tighten back down. I'm not even sure it's really a problem at all unless you need a plate long enough to support heavier lenses or a matte box. And even then you could probably add a $25 rail to solve that problem. Okay, let's summarize. The Solens T170 is a budget travel tripod, which calls itself a video tripod. The materials and construction aren't great, but they're about what I'd expect for the price, and I haven't had any issues with a year of solid use. This is a versatile little tripod, which can be configured in a bunch of different ways and can be moved easily in a suitcase, bag, or even in the water bottle holder of a backpack. The fluid base on the ball head allows for some smooth pans, and the ball head itself is good at what a ball head does. To upgrade on this style of tripod costs an additional $150 to $300 depending on the brand and really gets you some additional ease of use and better materials, but not much more for additional features. For $50, I'm very happy with this thing. The 3Pod V3AH has stable legs and a solid basic design and will hold your camera steady, but the parts all rattle and vibrate and feel flimsy. The movement on the head is not smooth and produces audible rubbing sounds. It cannot perform the advertised amount of adjustment and the knobs that it does have are flimsy and poorly laid out. For the sale price of $90 that I paid, I really wanted this thing to be a solid, reliable tripod and it brings me no joy to slag on it, but I think it's a piece of well-dressed detritus. I suppose it can hold the camera steady and not fall over, so I may find a use for it, but I really wish I had saved that $90 for a couple of light stands or something. If you need to spend less than $100 on a tripod, I would try to buy something like the Solens and a separate head from a company like Velvon. I don't know how well that will work, but it's definitely more promising than this offering from 3Pod. Finally, the E-Image EG01A2 is absolutely rock solid from its usability and layout to the construction and materials. The adjustment points are all well designed and implemented, which make the tripod easy to set up start using and to tune to do exactly what you need it to do. For $170, this is a steal and I feel like asking it to do anything more would be just unreasonable. Anyways, that's the end of this budget tripod roundup. I hope you've gotten some useful information about an area of video equipment which is rarely covered but seems to have a lot of interest. Do you have a cheap tripod you recommend? Is there one that you absolutely hated? Tell me all about it in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.